So Steve, tell us a little bit about Toronto as a company, uh, where you are from a funding standpoint and a product standpoint, then we're going to go into a little more detail about the technology. Fantastic. So Toronto Wireless, we're developing non-line of sight wireless backhaul for small cells. We like to call it universal small cell backhaul. It can be deployed line of sight, near line of sight, non-line of sight. Uh, the fact is that we've got a system, a system that has exceptional capabilities in terms of range and throughput. Uh, we were founded back in 2009. Right now we have about 40 folks working for the company. Uh, and we're just embarking on our carrier trials. We have a few under our belt and uh, we're elated about the results so far. Well, with uh, at and announcement about 40,000 uh, uh, small cells being deployed over the next year, backhaul is becoming the most important issue, uh, small uh, non-line of sight, line of sight. Uh, at the end of the day, what makes your technology unique? Sure. It, this is a really crowded space. There's a lot of folks that are talking about non-line of sight backhaul. In our view, uh, most folks have taken a cookie cutter approach to a design, basically taken an off the shelf chipset, added a radio and a power supply and gone to market. Uh, we've taken a fundamental new approach to backhaul. We've gone from the ground up with this advanced technology, advanced signal processing, and we believe we've brought to market a highly differentiated system. We can deploy an entire metro area in a single 10 megahertz slice of spectrum and provide robust, reliable backhaul in virtually any deployment scenario. And what spe spectrum bands do you operate? Right now we're at 2.6 and 3.5, and we've got a 5.8 version uh, in lab. And what areas of the world do you expect to operate initially? We're really focusing on the first movers, uh, and you know, we think that's happening in Europe and the United States. So those have been our target markets so far. I think uh, if you look at, at the market, there's a select number of carriers that are, are making moves. Uh, and it, of course, the market's developing slower than people would, would like or expect, but we believe those are the markets that are going to be the first movers, and, and we're going to be there to take advantage of it. What do you think is going to be the catalyst or the tipping point when you see mass deployments of uh, non-line of sight or line of sight backhaul technology? I think there's a couple catalysts. I think first is carriers have to get comfortable with the technology in terms of small cells in general. How does it affect the macro network? How do they plan it? How do they deploy it? Number one. Uh, number two, I think backhaul is a key limiter right now. And, and as Toronto comes to market, I think we're going to clear that bottleneck. Uh, like I said, to date, if you look at the trials and tests that carriers have done, uh, we don't know of any tests so far that really meet the requirements of the carriers end to end. Um, you know, some limited deployments, maybe uh, you know, 100 to 200 meters, you might have some good technology and good solutions. But in our mind, carriers are going to first deploy in a kind of a sparse deployment, maybe moving from one to two to three in a metro area to maybe five or 6,000 in a metro area. You need a backhaul solution that can scale with that in terms of density and in terms of time to market, in terms of deployability. Um, and so we think that with the Toronto solution, we can enable carriers to deploy rapidly uh, and, and meet those market demands. How about throughput and capacity? What sort of uh, bandwidth will you be able to provide to a carrier? Generally right now we operate about 75 megabits per second. Uh, we have uh, products in design now that will uh, take that significantly further. Uh, in our system now we can actually co-locate four of these links back to a, a, a macro site to provide an aggregate throughput of 300 megabits per second in that single 10 megahertz slice of spectrum. So I think from that standpoint, we're, uh, we're untouchable. Um, and again, as we move forward over the, about the next year, uh, we expect to provide significant enhancements in capacity, both in the per link speed as well as at aggregation point capacity. Well, these um, small cell networks uh, are, are going to be almost organic. They're going to be adding new uh, cell sites. They're going to be expanding those cell sites. The, um, so can you talk a little bit about the remote management of, of backhaul, you know, how are you anticipating the needs of the carrier? Absolutely, I, I think that's a, that's a critical area. First, even before you get to management, how do you plan and, and deploy these systems? And one of the issues carriers are going to have is what do you do for spectrum management? Whether it's licensed or unlicensed, how do you provision each one of these unique links on their own unique spectrum uh, bands? Again, the Toronto system uses a single 10 megahertz uh, slice of spectrum. Uh, we have advanced, uh, I would say, uh, almost SON type capabilities where the system automatically updates itself hundreds of times a second to maximize that link throughput, uh, which in effect allows the carrier to have a hands-off approach to managing that solution. Now, of course, we have all the capabilities in terms of EMSs and, and other types of software capabilities that would be put inside of a NOC, but the real issue is how do you manage these things when they're field? Uh, do you have outages? Uh, we have built-in redundancy on the radios and the antennas uh, such that there's automatic failover. So, you know, a hard outage we think is a very low probability. We expect greater than 200,000 hours of, of MTBF on these devices. So really it comes down to how do you deploy it, 
uh, and then you know, how do you manage it from remote knock? And I think we've got a tremendous solution there. Steve, thanks for your time. Thank you.